welcome back. This is Sal from SNS Grills, and today we are making a delicious pulled beef sandwich, or as I like to call it at home, a pulled beef torta. Before making this torta, we have to smoke a chuck roast. Now, chuck roasts are very versatile in the ways you could cook them. You could slice them up for some steaks, cube them up for a stew, grind them up for burgers, or cook them low and slow like we're doing today. Once tender, we're gonna pull and make this delicious pull beef torta. Let's set up the slow and sear kettle for some low and slow cooking. For today's cook, I'm using a drip and divide on the slow and sear kettle. I'm gonna place the water pan first, followed by the dripping griddle. I'm gonna light about 12 charcoals with a starter cube in one of the corners. And then I'm gonna fill the water reservoir with some hot water. I'm placing in the easy spin grate and then dropping a chimney of unlit charcoal. I'm dropping in some cherry wood chunks and closing the lid. Our target temperature for today is 275 degrees, which we're gonna achieve by setting our top vent to half open and the bottom vent is closed all the way, but the smoke hole is set to half open. These settings are a great starting point, but you might need to make slight adjustments on your end all depending on weather conditions and the type of charcoal you're using. While our slow and sear kettle comes up to temperature, let's prep up this chuck roast. I'm gonna season it with a brisket rub. This has salt, pepper, garlic, some cumin, sugar, and some chili powder for a bit of color and some heat. Let's get a nice coating on all sides. Our slow and sear kettle has achieved 275 degrees Fahrenheit and is stable. So let's place in our chuck roast for the first part of the cook. This first part, we're gonna develop a nice bark and instill some nice smoky flavor. While our chuck roast is cooking, I'm gonna prep our sides we're gonna use for our torta. Now, full recipe for everything we're making today will be down in the description. First up, our Mexican pickled onions and peppers. In a deli container, I will add one slice red onion, two slice serranos, two slice habaneros. I'm adding a teaspoon of salt and the juice of two limes. I will seal, give it a good shake, and then place in the fridge. In a few hours, the pickles, onions, and peppers will be ready for our torta. Next, let's prep up our garlic chipotle spread. I have this deli container with three tablespoons of mayo. I'm gonna press one clove of fresh garlic and then add a chopped chipotle with some of the adobo sauce. I'm gonna give it a good mix. Our chipotle garlic spread is done. Let's place in the fridge and let the flavors get acquainted with each other so they'll be ready for our pool B torta. Three hours in, let's check on this chuck roast looking mighty fine and smelling delicious. We aren't ready for the second part of the cook yet. The rub seasoning hasn't set yet. Not much time left though, so let's cover and keep on cooking. If you're enjoying this video so far, please remember to donate a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell. This way, you're not gonna miss out on a thing and you're gonna get notified whenever we release a new video. I'm gonna prep up our brazen liquid we're gonna use for the braise. In a small pot, I'm adding a cup of beef consomme or beef broth. I'm dropping in three cloves of pressed garlic and two teaspoons of that brisket rub I use on the chuck roast. Let's bring to a boil. At the four hour mark, our bark looks nice. This chuck roast is still not tender for pulling, but it's ready for the second part of the cook, the braising process. In an aluminum pan, I'm placing one large sliced white onion. I'm gonna move the chuck roast on top of the onions. Next, I'm pouring in our beef broth that we brought to a boil. I'm sealing with aluminum foil, and I'm gonna do a little maintenance on our slow and sear kettle. Start off by mixing up the charcoal a little bit, and then I'm gonna do a quick ash sweep. I'll bank the charcoals off to one side, and then I'm gonna place in another chimney of unlit charcoal. I'm gonna do a wipe of the grates with some bald aluminum foil, and then let's place our chuck roast back on the grill. At this point, I will also need to start monitoring internal temperatures. Let's cover and keep on rocking. Two hours later, this chuck roast is temping at 210 degrees. I will remove, uncover, and then check for tenderness. This chuck roast took a total of six hours and it's probing like peanut butter and it's ready for the rest. Let's pour some of the broth on top of the chuck roast like so and then seal. The rest is really, really important. So do not skip this step. The rest is gonna allow for the chuck roast to absorb a lot of the juice and then cool down a little bit for us to pull. This chuck roast has been resting for 90 minutes and we're ready to pull. I'm gonna pour out the broth into a fat strainer. 
you can incorporate this into the pulled beef later on for added juiciness and flavor. Don't throw away the onions. We're gonna add these tasty onions onto our torta. The chuck roast is still plenty hot, so I'm wearing some heat resistant gloves for the shredding process. Give it a good shred. I like using my hands for the shredding because it makes it easy to remove the unrendered fat pieces left behind. Words cannot describe how delicious it smells. And off camera, I had to be sneaky and do a quick little taste while you weren't looking. But shh, don't tell anyone. I cannot wait to build up the sandwich. I've toasted some bolillo bread, and to it, I'm adding our garlic chipotle spread we made earlier. And then I'll place in a healthy serving of this delicious pulled beef. Let's do a drizzle of your favorite barbecue sauce. And then a nice helping of our braised onions I told you not to throw away. Then top it off with some Oaxaca cheese. If your grill is still hot, place it back on there to melt it. Or you can use your oven. Finally, I'm topping it with some of these Mexican pickled onions and peppers. And there it is. A delicious, spicy pulled beef torta that's really gonna impress. Let's give it a bite. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> mm. To build the perfect sandwich, I think it needs to hit all of our taste buds. To the perfect savory notes of the beef, to the acidic and spiciness of the Mexican onions and peppers. And lastly, to the sweet tones of that barbecue sauce. This sandwich has it all and it's absolutely perfect. And remember, two zones are better than one. See you all in the next one. Take care.